Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And there's been a lot of chatter on the internet um, as far as tool circles regarding uh, snap-on hammers versus trusty cook hammers versus other brands of hammers and how effective they are or what the differences are or who makes what. Um, anyway, I am just a big fan of the snap-on hammers. Most of the time, um, the ones I use are filled with some sort of a a sand material inside an encapsulation here. They use a, a rod that runs down the center of a fairly flexible handle, um, multi-component. Um, they feel good in the hand. You can actually sometimes feel them bending, and that's actually a stress reduction, um, absorbs the shock. Um, they are plastic, though, so there are some limits. You know, wait till your stuff cools down before you whack on it. Um, I absolutely love their... They call these dead blows. To me, it's a ball peen, but it's a dead blow ball peen, and you can hear the material inside it. This one's probably, you can hear that. Um, it just causes a nice flat um, slap. It's totally the opposite of a good rebound on an anvil. Instead, it just drops everything. So the handle, uh, or the hammer doesn't bounce around. Um, it just feels good in the hand. This is, uh, their smallest here, I believe. This looks like a 10 ounce, kind of a plastic dead blow. Um, this one, I don't think has anything inside the head. This is an older one I've had forever. I love this thing. It's a multi-component uh, head, kind of a little softer rubber, harder rubber. Um, replaceable, of course, just a wonderful hammer. This one's just more of a bucket list tool. Um, but this is the smallest of their ball peens. And as you can see, this is an eight ounce here. Um, and a lot of stuff I like a small, um, kind of a small precision hammering. However, I am also, you know, a big fan of their larger ones. I mean, just look at the size difference here. Just the, the power that you have, you know, I can feel the the material bouncing around in there. Look at the length of that handle for that kind of swing. I mean, it's just amazing, you know, when you get into some of the bigger hammers. Oh, but wait, look at that. Boom. <laughs> look at this monster. This here is the 56 ounce snap-on um, dead blow ball peen hammer. I mean, it just dwarfs what I thought was this large one. And then this tiny one's about the size of one of the heads. But anyway, this thing, this monster with this long handle, you can literally feel it flex when you pick it up. Now, some people wonder, is that really what you want? Or would you want to try to make sure that you maximize the force by having a rigid handle? Well, yeah, that can be uh, at play as well. However, since you're repeatedly slamming the hammer into something, generally something that... Um, is fighting back the concept of having not only the dead blow inside the handle or inside the head but also a handle that somewhat flexes you end up with something that reduces the shock it's not like taking an aluminum bat and slamming it into a brick wall and just feeling that shock move through your body you know it's a working tool and this tool is designed to do something. It's designed to exert the influence up at the front end to bend or smash or move whatever it is that you need. But it is also designed to retain the force at the head and not transfer it down into your hand. So there's a lot of technology that goes into a good quality hammer. So although they are expensive, um, I, I really appreciate that Snap-on is spending the time trying to nail this, trying to get it right. And uh, so far they have. So that's why I like both the large handles, or um, the larger, I mean, excuse me, the ball peens, smaller ones, their standard plastic dead blows. This is just a, a wonderful hammer, you know, to just move stuff around, their plastic hammers, etc. So. Anyway, there it is, their big monster 56 ounce dead blow ball peen hammer. Uh, what, worth every cent. And with that, Doc out.